Today's video is the third installment of my weird jackass side projects and cameo series. As always, I'll go over five of the strangest movie and TV appearances that some of the jackass crew members have been a part of over the years. Starting off with a 2008 snowboarding movie called Shred, starring King Sh himself, Dave England. Let's hit the pipe, Eddie. Dude, I left it in the Jeep. No, the half pipe. Come on, let's go. Tom Green. Hello, hello. You guys aren't getting away with this. And from Jackass. <laughs> England. Parties, the magazines, the models and the bottles. Red. If you've watched basically any of my other content, you'll know that I've frequently talked about the action sports takeover that happened in the 2000s. While that takeover was definitely slowing down towards the later part of the decade, there was still the occasional extreme sports movie being released here and there. I was a pretty casual skater during that time, and I'll admit, Street Dreams, while not being the greatest movie ever made or anything, was awesome simply because it had a lot of funny scenes, mostly thanks to the inclusion of Ryan Dunn, and lots of great skate footage. Shred is basically the snowboarding equivalent of that movie. The film centers around Max, played by Dave England, and Eddie, played by Billy Zane. I mean, uh, Jason Bothe. All jokes aside, I looked at this dude's face at the start of the movie, and I couldn't really put my finger on it, but I felt like I recognized him from somewhere. After a bit of research, I realized that he played the slap-happy lifeguard in the music video for First Date by Blink-182. Meanwhile, Tom Green plays a character named Kingsley, but this was kind of a weird role for him because he played the straight man to Dave England's funny guy. And if you know anything about Tom Green's filmography, you know that he's always been typecast as the goofy comedic character. So this was a bit unusual. But Max and Eddie are washed up snowboarders that peaked in the 90s and are now working as lift operators at a ski and snowboard resort. Their only fans are two knuckleheads named K-Dog and Mikey, who I swear were based on Mac from the SSX snowboarding games. Frustrated with the trajectory of their lives, Max and Eddie decide to start a snowboarding camp, but eventually their snowboarding camp becomes a snowboarding team, and they're determined to win the Western Classic competition. And if you've seen basically any other extreme sports movie, you can sort of piece together the rest of the story from the plot points I provided. If not, the entire movie is available for free on YouTube, and there are definitely worse ways to spend an hour and a half. But Dave England has been very open about his distaste for this movie. When he appeared on the Bathroom Break podcast, he talked about the fact that he was offered a leading role in Shred, despite the fact that he had never acted or memorized a script in his life. He was given an acting crash course while on set, and managed to, at least in my opinion, pull off the role pretty well. And by the way, there was a sequel to Shred called Revenge of the Boarding School Dropouts, but you know how these videos work. We'll cover that one on a different episode. But next, let's talk about the TV show that was a favorite of 12-year-olds everywhere in the mid-2000s. I'm speaking from experience, of course. Crank Yankers. But specifically, three episodes from Season 4, featuring the voice and likeness of Jackass stars Ryan Dunn and Steve-O. Seriously, man, all we needed to keep ourselves entertained at a sleepover in those days was a landline phone, the white pages, and a shit ton of Jolt Cola. And if you don't know what any of those things are, go ask your grandpa. No good. But that's why Crank Yankers, a TV show where celebrities prank call unsuspecting individuals, and the audio from those calls is then lip synced by puppets, was just such a genius concept. The show had a run of over 100 episodes, and even received a reboot within the last few years. And not only was season 4 of the show the shortest season of Crank Yankers, but it was also the one season that aired on MTV2 instead of Comedy Central. I know I'm a bit biased because he was my favorite crew member, but I definitely preferred Ryan Dunn's prank call over Stevo's. Although, as much as I loved Ryan, I do think that it was a missed opportunity to not have Brandon DiCamillo lend his voice to the show, because he was the undisputed king of prank calls in the CKY crew. You have nothing better than to do What? You stuttering? You alright? Put the bottle down. It's alright. You don't need that. We need each other. If you've watched my episode about Jason Lee, you know that I was a huge fan of My Name is Earl back in the day. And no, unfortunately, none of the Jackass guys made an appearance on that show. But Chris Pontius did make a hilarious cameo appearance in the criminally underrated My Name is Earl follow-up called Raising Hope. This is by far one of my favorite cameo appearances done by a Jackass cast member. Chris appears in Season 2, Episode 15 of the show, during a scene in which the show's main character, Jimmy, ends up in the hospital after getting his face bitten by tarantulas. Pontius plays a character named Albert, and he, uh, took an arrow to the neck. I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the neck. neck. 
His cameo was very brief, but Pontius spoke with TVGuide.com after the episode aired, saying that he was psyched to do Raising Hope because it wasn't trying to reference the Jackass movies or TV show. Although the circumstances of his ER visit were definitely a nod to the Jackass franchise. It's clear that the creator of the show, or maybe one of the writers, was a fan of Jackass because Jimmy's father, Bert, made a hilarious reference to the franchise in season one of the show. I wish I had a video camera when I was younger. Those jackass guys make so much money. But I did all that stuff first. I drove a lawnmower into a pool. I had a matchbox car inside me. Not on purpose, but you wouldn't know it watching the video. And by the way, Raising Hope was so underrated that I've decided to do an entire episode on it. Keep an eye out for that one in the next two weeks. Now, I went easy on Shred, but I'm sorry. It's going to be impossible for me not to sh talk this next movie. National Lampoon's Pledge This, featuring a brief cameo by Preston Lacey. Now, of course, Rotten Tomatoes isn't the last say on whether or not a movie is going to be good or bad. The site simply takes the average critic rating and applies an overall score. Some of my favorite movies have absolutely terrible scores on Rotten Tomatoes, but Pledge This, on the other hand, has a tomato meter score of 0%. And I wouldn't give the movie a 0, but it's really fucking bad. Preston played a weird, Deliverance-esque redneck character who immediately gets knocked out with a pipe wrench. And hey, look who it is, the director of TV the movie, Elbow Macaroni. Preston and Elbow were joined by Paris Hilton, who probably should never be allowed to play the lead role in a movie ever again, along with Simon Rex, the guy that I can't help but compare to Ernest P. Worrell after someone pointed out how similar they look to one another. Make the mellow yellow move, know what I mean? Last but not least, let's check out the 2004 film Walking Tall, starring former WWE superstar Dwayne The Rock Johnson and future WWE superstar Johnny Knoxville. But the plot of Walking Tall is extremely simple to explain. Basically, The Rock's character Chris comes home after being honorably discharged from the army, only to find that his hometown is completely changed. The local cedar mill was closed down, and the town's main revenue stream is now a sketchy casino called the Wild Cherry, which is owned by that guy who kind of looks like evil Matt Damon. And surprise, surprise, it turns out that the casino is involved with some shady dealings. So Chris takes it upon himself to clean things up after he becomes the town sheriff. But that Dave England movie I talked about earlier should have taken some notes from Walking Tall, because Johnny Knoxville plays the funny man to the rock's straight man, and they actually had a really good chemistry with one another. I especially like that Johnny Knoxville without a doubt rolled up to the set of this movie with a homemade Misfits shirt. Also, I was going to make a joke about how The Rock probably watched the Dukes of Hazard remake with Knoxville and Sean William Scott, and subsequently decided to co-star in two different movies with each of the actors, but I forgot that Walking Tall in the rundown actually came out before Dukes of Hazard. So, I guess I could have just cut this part out, but f*** you, it's my channel. And of course, this is the movie where The Rock proved to us that he doesn't need a gun to make a change in his community. No, no, no. All he needs is a wooden fence post. That is, until it gets blown to smithereens towards the end of the movie. Walking Tall was a remake of a 1974 movie of the same name, and much like the original, it received two sequels with a different actor portraying the main character of the movie. I'm not gonna lie, I sort of felt like Charlie Kelly during that famous Pepe Silvia scene from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia while I was researching these movies, because I discovered that Kevin Sorbo was the protagonist for the sequels to the 2004 Walking Tall, an actor who is best known for his portrayal of Hercules a character that The Rock also ended up playing in 2014. Not to mention the actor that played the original protagonist in the 1974 Walking Tall, Joe Don Baker, acted alongside Johnny Knoxville in The Dukes of Hazard. These are the rabbit holes that I dive into while putting these videos together, but I wouldn't have it any other way. And that's it for today's episode. If you liked what you saw, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and comment down below with some suggestions for the next installment of the series. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.